Now I'm going to begin building the XY joints. First one is going to be this piece here. You're going to need, you're also going to need your spacers, some M325 screws, your, and the rest of your bearings and shims. We'll go ahead and get started by doing the heat inserts. Okay. These are just going to sit flush right on the part. And be careful when you're doing this one not to touch the soldering iron to the part. You don't want to mess that up and deform that plastic. Okay, so if, if you have a lighter or a heat gun, this is a good way, an alternate way to do it. Um, and especially for these tight fits, I, I prefer to do something like this. So basically you're going to put the heat insert on the end of a screw and then you're just going to get it nice and hot. Just hold it for maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And uh, once you start feeling a little bit of the heat in the screw, you should be able to put it in. It'll get the job done. Plus you can confirm that you're, that you're nice and straight on the screw. Now we're going to go ahead and build the bearing stack. So you're going to take this piece, take your M325s and insert them in. And then just like when we did the, the other parts, we're going to flip these over. And we're going to orient them just like in the manual on page 109. And then we're going to go ahead and build the stacks out. I'm going to go ahead and put two shims on this screw here, the left screw. I've got one on there. There's the second one. And then I'm going to do the bearings. I'm going to take the wide part on the bottom, drop it on. Wide part on the top, drop it on. And then I will take the two additional shims. And then I'll put those on there. And then after that, you're going to take one of your 3D printed spacers. And this is what it should look like after you do that. Now we're going to do the other one, and it's pretty much in the reverse order. So we're going to start off with a 3D printed spacer, drop that on. Then we're going to grab two of these shims. I'll go ahead and drop those on top. And then I'm going to grab two bearings. The bottom part, wide part on the bottom first, and then the wide part on the top next. And then after that, I'm going to fit two more shims on top. And just be real careful as you move this around because the screws are going to want to come out. There is the picture of the second one. And <clears throat> once again, we have. 3D printed spacer, two shims, two bearings, and then two shims on the very top. Okay, I was able to get these in. I would recommend putting these in first before you do the, the screw at the top here. Um, you definitely, you may need to clean out these holes a little bit to make sure that your screws can fit all the way in. And you should be able to get them in about that deep. So you are going to have a little bit of, of a gap there. But make sure these heat inserts are pushed in, pushed down pretty good because you're going to need them to be slightly recessed under the under the surface here. But after doing that, I think everything's looking pretty good. I just need to finish it off now with the M210. And this feels like it probably is good. You want this to be below the surface because there's going to be an extrusion sitting on that. So you do need to get it, all this stuff in here pretty good. Okay, I think I'm in pretty good shape there. Now I'll just repeat for the other one. Insert this down nice and good. Trying to go as far down as I can. So it's a little bit under the surface there. Okay. Right about 12 seconds there. And it is pretty important to get these straight because uh, Otherwise, your bearings might be off a little bit. We're going to just be building out stacks again with M325s. You can go ahead and insert them in the appropriate holes here. Do these two. And you're going to flip them over. And orient it like it's in the manual. And from there, 
we're gonna go ahead and build it out. We'll do this one first. So you need a spacer. And then you're going to need two shims. Going to need bearings. White on the bottom first, white on the top. And then you'll need two shims on top of that. All right, that one's good. Now we're gonna move on to this one. We're gonna start off with two shims. And then you're gonna need a bearing. These are my last, these should be your last two bearings. Bottom, white on the bottom first, white on the top next. Two shims. They may very well be your last shims as well, unless you have extra in your kit. And then your spacer on top of that. And that should be it. And then we're just going to connect these to the heat inserts and get this positioned. I'll orient it like it's in the manual. Okay, and here goes nothing. The goal is to do this without losing your stack. And I'm going to try to do this one first because it's closest to me. Okay, so I've got a good grip on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and tighten. Okay, I'm feeling it bite a little bit. All right, yep, that one's in there. And just keep uh, tightening it down. There, the bearing should still be able to move. I can't move, you're too tight. All right, so that is done, except for the final screw. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off here. Just be real careful not to strip these. Keep constant pressure on them. And now those are closed off. And then again, make sure these are all recessed. If you have any excess plastic on this, you might wanna just file it off or get an X-Acto knife and trim it. And next up, I'm gonna prepare the extrusion for the X. I'll go ahead and insert this preloaded nut strip here. And then I'm gonna use my last remaining rail. I've got my M2 by six screws and I'm going to go ahead and line up the rail and then I'll just lightly attach these for now. And also uh, it's a good idea to keep an eye on your carriage. Even better idea to put tape or zip ties on the ends. I'm going to loosen each one of these just a tiny bit. So I can adjust it and you'll see why here in the next step. At this point we want to make sure there's about 25 millimeters of space on either end of this. And mine looks pretty close. Yep. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to preload some nuts here on the ends, two each. And once you confirm your 25 millimeters you can go ahead and just tighten these down a little bit. And you may want to also check your adjustment. Make sure that it, it's not, it um, is nice and centered and smooth, which it is. Okay, now I have two on each end. We're also going to flip this over, and you're going to need two in the back. And I've now got two in the back. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and insert the uh, the um, pieces here, the cor the joints. If you can't get your piece in easily, go ahead and loosen these up because they're too tight. But you should be putting this one on this side with the spacer on the bottom, oriented like this. And then um, we're going to go ahead and try to, line, try to line those up with your preloaded nuts as well. And you're going to need some M312s. And don't put them in super tight. Just enough where they've drawn in because we're going to be adjusting. And the same thing will go for this side. There we go. You can see those are mostly lined up. This one may need to come over just a tad. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, that one's all the way in. I back it off a little bit. You should be able to adjust these a tiny bit if needed. And we're going to have to, the reason we have to do that is we're going to be putting this inside the frame, and these might have to come out a little bit. Okay, now flip this part over. We still have to put these uh, two pieces in. So go ahead and slide those um, preloads over. If you're using the no drop nuts like I just did, 
and you're going to use M3 by sixes on these. All right, I've got my M3 sixes out. I'll go ahead and sink these in loosely. So I'm going to tighten them all the way down, and then I'll back it off about a half turn. Okay, now we are ready to place it. And if you're not sure, it's always a good idea to check your work. So the spacer should be on the bottom here and the top here. If you have that, you're good. You can also check the sides. So that should be the left side. And that's what the right side should look like. So the manual just calls out that we're not going to need an end stop because we're going sensorless only. Normally you would have one on this side over here on the right. Okay, so now we're going to set this part in over the rails and most likely you're going to have to stretch this out just a tiny bit so that it sits flush with the rail and it's pretty easy to do mine was pretty much already there so i didn't have to do much um, and then you're just going to go ahead and use your m2 by six flathead screws make sure you get flathead screws for this part and these are what i'm talking about so these have a flatter head on them and those are designed to fit and be recessed behind the plastic so it's flush, well, it's not really recessed, but it's flush with the plastic, which is what you want. Go ahead and get your screw ready. And I actually had to use an even smaller driver for these. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and try to, what you don't want to do is walk it around too much on the reel and scratch, get it all scratched up. That's no fun. So try to eyeball it up as best as you can. Once you get one in, the rest are pretty easy. So it should line up. I'm going to do that for this side and then this side. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and do it on the right-hand side. Same, same drill. Doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm going with the bottom right. Or the bottom front, I should say. Okay, that one's in. Now at this point, it might be easier just to go ahead and set things on the side so you can get to them a little easier, which is what I'm going to do here. They should just go right in at this point. Yeah, they're all going in nice and smooth. I'm going to make sure they're all nice and tight. Just be real careful on these because they definitely have a tendency to want to strip. You don't have to over tighten them, but you do need them in there pretty well because that's going to be moving, moving around quite a bit. Now I'll just go ahead and finish off the other side. Same way. I've got it back on the top, or back right side up. I'm just going to test the motion here. That looks good. If you get any kind of weird binding and you can't go all the way back, there's a really good possibility your frame is not square. And if that's the case, you're probably going to need to do, do some adjustments and make sure that you want to make sure everything is square before you move on. So in my case, um, I can tell both these are hitting the parts the same time and same thing up here I've got the same amount of gap it's just a good thing to double check and most importantly I've got no binding everything's moving nice and smooth here and once you check that everything's nice and square you're going to want to run this all the way at the back and then take your driver go ahead and tighten up these screws I like to keep pressure in the center And then don't forget the bottom ones. And those you may want to flip over, but I can reach them just fine. All right. Let's double check. If anything looks off, you can easily you can easily loosen them. Well, that feels pretty good. That's moving really nice. And we're going to have an opportunity to do this again later if we need to when we tighten up the belts.